I've got such an attractive, sickly glow in this light. But Jesse, what happened to the light bulbs you were gonna buy? Oh, well, you know, that is none of your beeswax. Hey everybody, I'm Jesse the Lookout, and today on Quickie Comics, we're talking about Odyssey. That's uh, O-D-Y-C, with the letters. This series was written by Mad Fraction, who might also be known for his work on sex criminals at Hawkeye, and maybe more widely known for his work on Punisher and X-Men. But I haven't read those. This story is a retelling of Homer's Odyssey, only gender bent and in space, which means the majority of the characters are ladies. And admittedly, that was a pretty big selling point for me. What can I say? I really dig checks on armor. So right away, one of the things that is extremely special about Odyssey issue number one is this eight page spread right at the beginning. Oh, you think it's over? It's not. Oh my gosh. Ugh, ugh. Look at it. Look, look at it. Ugh. Oh God, no. So on one side, we have the first illustration introducing our characters. And on the other side, we have the history of all known things. So the history of all known things tells the tale of the Greek pantheon after the fall of the Titans and as it pertains to our current story. I mean, there are probably a lot of things that happened in the Greek pantheon between the birth of the universe and the Odyssey, but you don't really need to know how he got the shoes, just that Hermes did some stuff and he's also included in the story. This is definitely required reading if you want to understand the relationship between the characters. I mean, skip it if you think the dialogue in like Game of Thrones is boring, but this sets the stage for everything that follows it. All you really need to know for the sake of this quickie review is that Odyssea and her soldiers have been fighting the last 99 years over a guy. One of Odysseus's pals got in a fight with some chicks over this like super hot guy and they decided he was worth going to war over. But that's all over now. On the other side of the spread, we see Odysseus and her soldiers walking across the battlefield one more time. The impregnable Troia has fallen and the fighting is over. They can go home now. On the other side of our incredible spread, we have a four page wide map of the space that we'll be traveling through. Things tend to get pretty spacey wacy while we travel through the dimensions with Odyssea and her crew on their way home. So it's hard to say if this is the whole universe right now, a different portion of it, or something else entirely different from what we know. Admittedly, in issue two, I tried to go back to the map to kind of get a, a, an idea of where we were in space, but that map was a little, it was kind of unhelpful. The history part, I definitely referred back to and was very helpful in letting me know who was related to who and like how the characters know each other, but that map, like the font is really bad on it and it's not very specific. Like circles, just like random circles. Not, not as helpful as you want them to be. Finally, once we get through this incredible introduction, we are introduced to Odyssey and her crew as they celebrate their victory. Queen Een is there with he, the guy who caused all of this mess. Queen Een has carved her name onto his face so no one would ever want him again. I guess it's worth mentioning that there are like no men that exist in this universe. The reason that everybody went to war over this guy is because at the time he was the only male in the universe. Zeus has done a pretty good job of eliminating the last two or three generations of life altogether, and so there are very few men who have managed to escape her grasp. This duo isn't seen again in the issues that I'm gonna talk about, but I felt like they were worth mentioning because they're kinda cool. I mean, freaky, like non-consensual BDSM, torture, slave, creepy, awful, but Kind of interesting. This issue, we are also introduced to Zeus and the other members of the Pantheon. Most of them remain nameless for now, unless you know something about Hellenetic polytheism. Most of them are in agreement that they're going to make the journey for Odyssey and her crew as difficult as possible. You know, as gods do. This issue mostly contains table setting. Odyssey and her crew go through a couple of fights, but they're unremarkable plot-wise, since they only feature goonies that don't even speak our language. Though the art is incredibly psychedelic, and we are introduced to how Odysseus' ship works. Odyssey is at the center of the Odyssey as its captain. She's actually physically and mentally hooked up to the ship, along with five of her best people. I think the idea is that they lend her their psychic force, and then that in turn powers the ship. When only one of them doubts their objective, the Odyssey as a whole is weakened, and they almost lose the battle. As punishment for her doubts, Odysseus casts that bitch out into space. Odysseus ain't got fucking time for this. Bitch wants to get home. We do get a little bit of mystery before the end of the issue, as we see what is driving Odysseus home with such a force. Waiting for her back on Ithaca is her son, Talim. 
So one thing I noticed when I was reading this issue is that there are very few actual speech bubbles and there is text that says, you know, he says, she says, like I'm reading a novel. What I learned is that Matt Fraction is trying to communicate in a form of speech called dialectic hexameter. The original Odyssey was written in Latin and has a poetic form that switched between long and short syllables. This helped people memorize hundreds of pages of speech. In English, we don't have that same thing. We have stressed and unstressed syllables. I, however, am a literary pleb. So unfortunately, this kind of detail is lost on me and I can't really talk about it other than to say that it exists. It's not until the second issue that we can finally start to see some characterization in our players. Zeus is justifying the murder of life throughout the cosmos and I actually think she's kind of funny. She's all fury and rage and she feels no remorse for killing every man in existence over and over again in order to prevent the seed of life from taking root. She does it because she knows better than anyone that all children come looking for their inheritance. This issue we are taken to a place made of the many levels of carnal indulgence, all the way down to the precious lotus flower. Those who consume too much of the lotus lose all desire to return home and instead only wish to graze on its memory fading properties. Odyssea and her wife, along with the rest of their crew, stop here for some much needed rest. I like this drawing not just because it's awesome, but because of what it implies about space travel. Wherever the Odyssey is going, it's not just normal space as we know it. They're traveling through dimensions to get to the Lotus Palace. The dimensions look two-dimensional as they pass from one to another, but the body of Promethean and the Odyssey look like they're in 3D space compared to the doorways. So maybe Odyssea and the gods are actually like fourth or fifth dimensional creatures? something to consider. Oh yeah, and another little bit of history. Promethean is one of Zeus's daughters and she tripped balls on the lotus flower a couple thousand years ago. As a result of consuming so much lotus, she experienced pure god thought. Since that's a power Zeus doesn't want very many people to indulge in, lest they overthrow her, Zeus left Promethean to experience centuries of psychic torture. Where centuries ago she writhed in ecstasy, she is lost in the darkness of consciousness and she rarely remembers to move. Okay, so dimensional play is also one of my weaknesses. What can I say? This comic's got it all. Hot chicks, armor, space, dimensions, fantastic art, great writing, a steady schedule. I, I love it. So Odysseus' wife is something called a Sebex. S-E-V-E-X. Sebex? Sebex? Eh, whatever. However you want to say it. And it's in the palace that we learn about her true nature. She and all of her sisters are creatures created by Promethean in order to give life. They are literally baby machines. The one at Odysseus' side, who is also the mother of her son, is no different. She wants to bear Odysseus another child, but the captain has other problems to worry about than trying to raise a kid. Odysseus' aggressiveness devastates Penelope, and the Cebex is left to consume the lotus flower for eternity. Or I presume, presume for eternity. I feel like when you're traveling through space and you leave somebody behind, they're, they're not gonna catch up. Well, for this issue, the art that includes the gods is actually, like, incredibly psychedelic and very cool. They don't really do anything in this issue other than talk shit about Odysseus. But at the beginning of issue three, we're introduced to two new gods, Dionysus and Apollo. Apparently on her journey, Odysseus was gifted some caskets of wine from the temple of Apollo. And this really pissed Apollo off because this, that's wine for her. No one else, that's her wine. Those are supposed to be tributes for her. So Zeus comes in and scoops Apollo up. So Poseidon, Apollo, and Zeus try to recruit Dionysus on their hate train for Odysseus, And in exchange, they'll make her a full god. We don't get to see Dionysus' answer, but in the meantime, Poseidon decides to fuck with some of Odysseus' shit and crashes the Odyssey on Clo- Clo- Cloos? Cloos? Kylos. I'm gonna say Kylos. Sounds a little bit spacier, but I have a feeling that's completely wrong. It's on Kylos that we get to experience what I would dare say is the most popular and overused portion of the Odyssey, the battle with the Cyclops. For the last half of the issue, we get to experience the brutality of the Cyclops as Odyssea and her crew women try to fight it off. Many of them are injured in the fight, whether it's from being thrown into these food troughs or from being straight up consumed by the Cyclops. Odyssea is thrown into the cell with her sisters and demands the Cyclops call her all men, as in, all men are the scourge of this world. When I looked online, I couldn't find any significance for this line, so I think it's just Odysseus being a smartass. It could be a reflection of how the gods view not only Odysseus, but humanity as a whole. Zeus hates all mortals, so the longer she's able to keep all men at bay, the longer she's going to stay on top of the universe. The issue ends with Odyssea rallying her crew to make a fire out of the dead bodies of their comrades. What they're gonna do with this? I don't know! You'll have to read issue four when it comes out. So full disclosure, I've never actually read the Odyssey. 
I've only experienced it through, like, Arthur and Wishbone in the 90s and that shit movie Percy Jackson. So I'm really interested to see how they're going to deal with the Cyclops now that they don't have to make it kid-friendly. After getting through the first three issues, I think I can confidently say that Odyssey is going to be a regular on my subscription list. It's different, and it's really refreshing. The narrative isn't something that I'm used to, but that just means that I have to adjust my mindset when I read it so I can consume it to its fullest potential. So what I mean is like how they speak, the narration, how the characters relate to each other, they all kind of feel a bit distant than say like Sex Criminals or Hawkeye, where you felt like you were really getting to know individuals. Right now everybody just kind of seems like archetypes, and like this is a pretty old story so you know this is from a time when those archetypes were first being created. But I trust Matt Fraction to be able to add some personality into these characters which is something I'm really looking forward to. Most of the problems I had with the first issue are more or less smoothed out by the third issue. I think it's just kind of a matter of uh, Fraction and Ward getting to know each other and the art and the story as things develop. It, I'm hoping it'll be a little bit less stop and go as the first issue was. The art style is very cool. There are times when I feel the art style is a bit abstract and I have a hard time figuring out like the set that we're on, but Characters and designs are very well executed. The design of the gods, for example, are very unique. I love Zeus as this huge woman. Her body and her girth and appearance definitely say, I ate entire generations of humans and I'll kill you too if you get in my way. Poseidon's design is perhaps the most interesting to me. She only has the idea of a body, and by looking at her you can kind of get the idea that she's made of shifting space-time. Except her boobs. Those are pretty clear. Instead of being limited by the water on Earth, this is a space opera, and her sea is the cosmos itself. If Promethean is the chaos underlying the universe, then Poseidon is our ability to float on top of it. At least that's just my interpretation. The designs of the human characters are okay. Odyssey and her crew kind of have these spacey, wacy armor types, and Odyssey really only stands out because she's got white hair and a cut jaw. Other than Penelope and this pink-haired girl that shows up occasionally, most of Odysseus's crew are nameless red shirts. I'm thinking that as the series continues there might be a couple more girls that are standouts, but we'll see how that goes. I really enjoyed Odyssey, and even though the story can sometimes be a bit confusing and vague at times, it's really not that hard to pick up what Mad Fraction is putting down. I'm not sure if non-comic book readers would be as into this as some of Fraction's other titles, but this story has got a lot of love and attention put into it, and I would give it a very solid B+. Thanks for joining me in today's edition of Quickie Comics. If you liked what you saw, you can go ahead and hit that like button or share this with your friends. You can also check out my channel for other cool stuff that I do. If you want to see more of me, I'm also available on Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, Ello, and the site called Winello. If you have any suggestions for things I should read, you should go ahead and leave a comment on that down below. I, I love reading new comics. I'll read pretty much anything, though admittedly I'm not super into superhero comics. If you guys are reading anything interesting this week, you should let me know about that too down below. Whether or not you'd recommend it, whether or not I should read it, you know, like whatever. Just, just chat. I love, ooh, shit. I love reading comments. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Stay groovy.